Finally, we look at a unique experience in New Fantasyland, Enchanted Tales with Belle. The queue takes you into Marisa's cottage, which has tons of great details, such as a portrait of Belle's mother who's way out of Marisa's league. Although some of the details actually in the movie are missing, like that nifty overdressed people, but that's a nitpick. Eventually, you make your way from the living room into Marisa's workshop, where a cast member will tell you about the tools and inventions. It's an adjustable chandelier. He turns his crank on the bottom, and he can get perfect lighting anywhere in the workshop. If it wasn't for Maurice inventing the woodshop machine, Chip would have never saved Maurice and <coughs> Belle from guest on scratch. Then the cast member will tell you about the mirror on the wall. What about the mirror? The mirror? I think it's a very nice mirror. Yeah, it looks right nice. Well, they'll tell you about it after they get the cue that it's time to move on. Does it serve a particular purpose? Well, whatever Maurice wants to make sure he looks good when he goes up to dinner or something. He's got to look his best when he goes to visit the well, He's going to a castle. Yeah, they should give them a better stalling script for this one. But once they hear the clock chime, then they'll tell you about it. This mirror was actually a gift from the beast. It allows Maurice to visit Belle inside the castle any time that he wants. And I know the perfect time that we should visit. Repeat after me. Take me back to the day Belle and Beast fell in love. Take me back to the day Belle and Beast fell in love. Haunted mirror actually stretching? Welcome back to the day, Bell and Beast fell in love. Then you walk through the door that used to be a mirror, and now we're in Beast Castle, and wow, this is a convoluted setup for an attraction. We're having a perfectly normal day looking at the dark, secluded room of the guy who plays with axes and suddenly TARDIS mirrors. Gentlemen, I think we finally figured out the perfect way to encapsulate the magic of Beauty and the Beast on a theme park attraction. Two words, time travel. <laughs> I mean, Gaston's walking around outside, so we already accept that the movie hasn't ended yet, so why do we now need to go back in time to a point in the movie? And we're entering through the cottage to get to the castle, even though there's a perfectly good castle entrance next door? Man, this attraction's pre-show raises more questions than freaking Prometheus. Anyway, now we're in a hallway, and the wardrobe is there. You can oh, see everyone else can too? Yes! I am, I am, I am so excited. I'm so excited that I'm not going to move at all. Well, except for my head. I'll move my head, but that's it. Okay, I'm sorry. That's a stupid nitpick. Of course her body won't be as expressive as in the movie if she's also going to be a functioning wardrobe, and at least her face is quite expressive. Tonight's the night Belle and the Beast fall in love. Well, at least we hope so. And to help move things along, you're all going to surprise Belle and act out the story of how they met. Oh, I can hardly wait. I can't wait either. Is everyone excited? Yeah. Woo! Wonderful! And we have enough parts for everyone! So they start assigning audience participation roles to reenact the story of how Belle and Beast met. Oh! And we can't forget my distinguished friends, the Enchanted Portraits! They're always laughing! Wait, they are? This is turning into one of those school plays where they make up last minute roles just so nobody feels left out. The Lobster? Yeah! In the Nativity Play? Yeah, first lobster. There was more than one lobster present at the birth of Jesus. Duh. Who gets to portray me? Oh, you've got some awfully big drawers to fill. Good night, everybody. Then you enter the library, and man, I thought the Jeopardy set looked smaller in person than on camera. This is tiny. Not quite the grandeur of the movie's library. 
Of course, they have to fit two libraries in the building so they can offset two performances of the show and move the line along more quickly, so I'll accept it. On the mantle is Lumiere, who might be the best animatronic I've ever seen. Sure, his face is just a screen, we've all seen that before, but his body motion is fluid, and aside from the fact that he just stands in one place, he really looks like the cartoon character come to life. Lumiere? The lights, please? But of course! <sighs> well, where are you, mademoiselle? Lumiere? No! Surprise! Surprise! I mean, I'm still technically a prisoner, and I haven't had contact with another human being in months, so seeing a room full of tourists is mind-blowingly shocking. Well, shall we before your big dinner with the master tonight? We thought it would be fun to act out a story with you. <coughs> Very well. Let us begin. Once upon a time, there was a charming, intelligent young woman whose name was Ben. Don't patronize me, flame boy. One night, when her father was away on a journey, Ben heard the sound of galloping. Everyone gallop! It was her father's voice, Elite, returning to town. But for Maurice, he was not with him. Ben asked Philippe where her father was. <laughs> Which meant, I think he's somewhere in the forest. Locked in a cold, dark dungeon cell, she found her father, Maurice. Then suddenly, the biggest, most ferocious beast Bell had ever seen jumped out and roared! <laughs> that was it? <laughs> Do it again. Belle's taking the reenactment of the most traumatic experience of her life rather well. Suddenly, all the enchanted objects jumped to their feet. The suits of armor marched in time as we invited everyone to be our guest and our guest and our service and the test. And Belle and the children march around the room to one of the best Disney songs ever. Okay, everybody start marching and wave to your mommies and daddies. That's the way. Let's keep going, son. That's the way, right out the door, Mark Fire Escape. There you go. And that is the story of how the beauty met the beast. There, see? That didn't take eight seasons. Although it was devoid of Neil Patrick Harris. Then all the participants get a souvenir bookmark and a picture with Belle before she goes off to eat and dance to an Oscar song. And we all exit through a door that comes out the side of a mountain, and we might still be in the past. I don't know anymore. Despite some confusing theming, I can easily see young children being delighted by this. It's more theatrical than a boring meet and greet, but still more hands-on and intimate than a full-fledged show. And I'm sure kids who try this out will grow up looking back on it with fond memories.